Hi, I'm Michael Killen. We all know that NASA has done some tremendous things. It put us on the moon, on Mars, and on other planets, but it has also landed at Moffett Field at Ames, at NASA Ames facility in California, and created a base called Sustainability Base. And I have invited the man who helped develop Sustainability Base, which is the most energy efficient building in the federal systems. I want to ask him about the deep thinking that led to the creation of this important building, this icon exemplar for the nation. Steve, how are you? I'm fine, Michael. And you are Steve Zornetzer, and you are the Exo Associate Executive for Research for NASA Ames. Yes. And I certainly don't understand the hierarchy, but where is a, an Associate Director in the hierarchy? So there's a director and a deputy director who deal largely with um, external entities within NASA, the, doing the politics of NASA, et cetera. And my job is to oversee and manage all of the research, technology, and development and engineering that occurs at NASA Ames in support of NASA projects and other projects that we do for the federal government. I peeked a little bit into what is being done at NASA Ames, and it's an amazing number of research projects. Yes, there are. And you are on top of all of them? I try to be. It's a challenge, but that's my job. Okay. So um, when did you start thinking about the development of sustainability base? And maybe before you answer that, maybe it's best you articulate what it is. Well, sustainability base uh, is the, uh, the newest building at NASA Ames Research Center. Um, it was first conceived um, in late 2008 as a result of me attending a meeting where the, f the first new building that we were going to build at NASA Ames in 25 years was being designed. And I was just curious about what we were planning to do with that building. So I attended this meeting. Um, and I was very disappointed, to say the least, in the design that was being proposed. It was a very conventional design. Um, it was barely a lead, pla a lead silver building. Uh, it could have been built 25 years ago. And I decided in that moment, um, without knowing anything about building buildings, without ha having ever built or designed yeah. a building before in my life, um, I decided that that was the wrong building to build and that the right building to build was the building that would be the greenest building in the federal government. I made that decision on the spot. I stood up. I said, time out to the rest of the group. And I said, we're not going to build that building. We're going to build the greenest building in the federal government. Now, you had such a position of power at that time. You could stand up and make that statement. Yeah, I, um, I probably um, uh, used my position as a way of making a decision on the spot that uh, caused a lot of consternation among a lot of people who had done a lot of hard work in designing the wrong building. So the meeting was about the building. It was about a different building. About a different building. Yes. And where in your background did you have the knowledge to recognize this is just a vanilla state yeah. of the art at the time? And to be even, even able to envision something something new? Well, I mean, I don't think it took a rocket scientist, no pun intended, uh, to see that the building that was being proposed was a very conventional building. It didn't have operable windows. It had conventional air conditioning and conventional heating systems. Um, and nothing about it reflected sustainability. Nothing about it reflected the kinds of um, advanced technologies that NASA has developed. Nothing about it reflected the spirit of Silicon Valley in the 21st century. And all of those things just congealed for me in the moment to, to decide that we needed to build something that was challenging for us that would become a, um, an icon for us uh, in the future. And so from that moment, sustainability base uh, 
began to evolve. Um, we began to, we connected with the right architects and designers who, uh, Bill McDonough, for example, a very famous um, uh, green architect, um, uh, was the, the designer for this building and came up with the concept. And it was a brilliant concept. So today it is the, the greenest building, the, the highest performing building in the federal government. It's a building that generates more energy each day than it consumes. It's a building that consumes 90% less potable water than a conventional building of equivalent size. We do this by using NASA technologies that we developed for aerospace applications. And we've taken those technologies and modified them and embedded them in a building on planet Earth. It's the only building on planet Earth that has these specialized NASA aerospace technologies embedded in them. There's a water purification and recycling technology that's in the building to recycle our gray water and use it again. That technology is the same technology our scientists and engineers at NASA Ames developed for the International Space Station. That technology is flying today on the International Space Station and, and recirculating and recycling 100% of the water for those six astronauts on the International Space Station. We've scaled that technology up, we've improved it, and now it's supporting 210 people in a building on planet Earth. Similarly, our control system, our intelligent control system for the building that manages all of the subsystems of the building, um, is um, derived from aerospace uh, software that we've developed both for space applications and advanced aircraft to manage uh, and do real-time optimization of all of the subsystems in the building. So. All right, that's a lot. And as I listened to all of those pieces of technology, it made me think, since you were the head of research for NASA Ames, you not only had an understanding of the technology, uh, and certainly not an expert in all of it, right. but you knew the pieces. And since you were part of this much larger entity, NASA, you had an idea of what was at Chet Propulsion Labs and at the other labs. Would mm -hmm. that be correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you were able to look at a new potential building and to start picking and choosing the technology that might fit. Yes. That's right? Mm -hmm. And did you have to go out to these other divisions, entities of NASA, and and get buy-in and support from them to mo modify or help uh, apply yes. those pieces in the building? Um, yes and no. For the water purification system, we work closely with the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. They are responsible for managing and operating um, the International Space Station and making sure that that, um, that entity is safe for the astronauts, the American and international astronauts that, that um, occupy the space station. So we worked closely with them in uh, coming up with a scheme by which we could s uh, demonstrate a scale-up project um, for the water purification system. Uh, and they're actually supporting uh, what we're doing and using it as a test bed because the goal of NASA eventually is to create human habitats elsewhere and elsewhere probably will be Mars initially. Um, if we're going to put astronauts on Mars for a, a, any length of time, we are need, we're going to need to support their habitat in an extremely sustainable way where everything is recycled because we can't bring it all with us. And so Sustainability Base is actually serving as a test bed for certain technologies that will be used by NASA in habitats, human habitats elsewhere in the future which is kind of very interesting. Yes, it is, and, but I'm going to go somewhere else. Okay. You said the Johnson Space mm -hmm. uh, uh, of NASA yes. provided the water uh, treatment facility. No, they, uh, act, they, well, they worked with us. Okay. We actually developed that for JSC, and um, working with them after we developed the initial designs, we modified it so that it could fly on the International Space Station. What other parts of NASA mm -hmm. Were you able to acquire and, and utilize their technology? We didn't have to. The rest, all of the other NASA technology came from NASA Ames. 
In fact, virtually all of the technology, the NASA technology that is embedded in sustainability base was derived from technology developed at NASA Ames. Seems to me it's quite amazing. Uh, needless to say, I, you know, I'm a layperson and I really was not aware what was happening over at NASA Ames. But for you to have so much technology at your fingertips mm -hmm. to be able to apply in building a remarkable building, it's like a coincidence or? I, I, th I think it was. I think we took advantage of what we've been doing for NASA in support of uh, space and, uh, and, and advanced aeronautics for decades. And I, I think the, the really deep thought here is that we took those technologies, some of those technologies that were selected for this building and for the purpose of bringing those technologies back to the people of planet Earth. My goal, our goal at NASA, once we've demonstrated and perfected these technologies in our new building, sustainability base, that we will license these technologies to commercial entities who then can sell it to the American people. Um, and 10 years from now, you or anyone watching this show could go to their local hardware store and buy one of these technologies in a box, take it home and have it installed in their house, and then they can generate more energy than they consume. They can use 90% less water than they currently use. Imagine if every house in this country were to do something like that a decade or two from now. Our energy problems and our water problems would take on a very different perspective. Yes, so I'm getting the feeling, first of all, I remember when I was a young man and NASA went to the moon, there was a lot of uh, talk about what NASA had developed to go to the moon, new advances in medicine, pharmaceuticals, et cetera. And am I correct to say that culture is actually built in to the NASA people? I hear it oh, from yes. you. Oh, yes, it is. Develop up for up there, yeah. but apply also. Yes. Yeah, it's very much part of our, our strategy is to um, spin out, is the term we use, is to spin out technology that we develop, license it to, to people and companies so that the American public can benefit from it. Would I be correct to say sustainability base is one of the most important examples of taking NASA technology and applying it, let's say, commercially would that be correct? I, mean, I can't think of a building that NASA has ever produced before. I, I'm not aware of space. I well, think I think I, I, would, I would just modify your, your statement a little bit. It is the most important demonstration of taking NASA technology and putting it in a building on planet Earth. But there are many other examples of NASA technologies that we have spun out into society that benefit our everyday lives. I mean, the American public, as every time you get on an airplane, you're relying on NASA technology for air traffic management, air traffic control, runway safety, um, as, as well as the safety and design of the engines, the aeronautic, the aer aerodynamic shape of the plane you're flying in, the winglets at the tip of the wings to save, uh, to create stability and save fuel. I mean, uh, NASA technologies affect you every day of your life, uh, and, and most of us don't even you have any awareness of that. When I read statements about uh, Romney and uh, Paul Ryan's uh, budget, I notice they're going to significantly slash uh, scientific research. And when I read that, I thought about you folks, not just you at Ames, but, and I hope they're not planning to include you folks uh, in that cut. Yeah. This is something that I, as a, as a civil servant and as a government employee, um, I'm not really going to comment in sure. public anything about politics. So. Sure. Now that you have this building, this, this thing that you can actually demonstrate, what groups of people are most, are coming in and looking to take advantage of what you have produced? Yeah, so I mean, it, we have, every single week, we have multiple tours of our building 
by both federal and private sector groups who are very interested in understanding what we've done with sustainability base. Um, and for those viewers who are interested, you can just go on the NASA website and, or go, just Google sustainability base and you'll get a lot of information about the building. But um, this building was designed very specifically and intentionally to be optimized for its location on planet Earth, for a climate, for our climate right here in, in Silicon Valley, and for any other climate in the world that's like our climate. So if uh, there are a number of groups that are interested in replicating sustainability base, both in the federal sector and in the private sector, um, to basically build clones of this building um, in places ar along the California coast and other places in the country where the climate is similar to our climate. Um, and so we're in active discussion with a number of these groups and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, sustainability base is only six months old. We're, st we're still in the commissioning phase of the building. We're still tuning and adjusting the various subsystems to optimize its performance. But even before it's fully optimized, it's already meeting some of our goals. It's already generating more energy than it consumes. That's right. fabulous. Oh yes, uh, more energy than it consumes. When you talk about the climate, climate like California, would that include, for example, <clears throat> the Medi Mediterranean mm -hmm. southern coast of yes. France yes. and Italy? Yes. Uh, the Midwest of the United States? No. Probably not. And why not? Because the, 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 the differential temperatures between day and night in, in the summertime, for example, in the Midwest or in the South, um, don't allow the building to be optimized and to use the kinds of subsystems that we've been able to use here. For example, a geothermal cooling and heating system, which is what we're using in sustainability base. That wouldn't work very well in other places, in, in places where the climate um, really doesn't um, take advantage of the natural heating and cooling that the earth can provide us. In our climate right here, because it's such a temperate climate, we can take advantage of that. Um, so our building would not work well in Buffalo, New York. It wouldn't work well in Miami, Florida. But it works perfectly in some of these other locations that you've just described. What about parts of Africa, let's say South Africa? It could, in it Australia. Could. Yeah. In Australia, mm -hmm. OK. So private as well as federal state organizations have been coming to you oh, yes. and yeah. trying to learn more about the building and possibly replicate it. Or you know. What about great corporations like IBM? Are they coming to you for designs, for technology, uh, to help them build their various projects onto the smart planet? Uh, so we have had uh, actually a couple of symposiums with IBM and others uh, in attendance. We, um, we are explicitly looking for partnerships with the private sector to work with us in developing and testing new sustainable technologies uh, for the built environment in our country. Um, one of my goals with this building from the very beginning was to um, create a living test bed where we could be an honest broker for testing new sustainable uh, and energy saving technologies. We already have about eight or nine partners that we're working with today in the building, six months after the building has been constructed. Um, and we're already working with them, collecting data, evaluating their systems, and um, uh, helping them improve their products at the same time we benefit from those products in the building to save energy. Would you name a few? Um, and metric um, is one. Uh, we're doing plug load monitoring with them. Very interesting ex uh, set of studies that we're doing. It's going to save us a lot of energy. Um, I IBS, Integrated Building uh, Solutions, they're, they're doing a lot of work with us on modeling and simulation and evaluating um, the energy optimization uh, for the building. We're working with Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, um, a company called uh, Vertigree. Uh, which, is, which is also working on um, looking at the electrical consumption of a variety of subsystems in the building so we can monitor, the, monitor that in real time and optimize the, its functionality. What about companies like Honeywell or Johnson Controls? Yeah. Are they interested? You know, uh, we haven't had contact with them yet, but those are the kinds of companies that when we perfect our intelligent adaptive control system a year or so down the line, those are the kinds of companies that could be interested in licensing 
our, our software and our technology, and then commercializing it and then selling it back to um, the American people. Do you have an organization that goes out reaching? Yes, we do. Uh, interesting. Yeah. And if we were to look out five years from now, um, what impact do you think sustainability base, NASA's work, your work, will have on the economy, on climate change, on energy efficiency, or any measure that you'd like to pick? Yeah, I mean, these are, these are global and enormous problems, and so any one project is not likely to have a significant impact. What I'd like to be able to demonstrate is that, number one, we can build buildings that actually uh, are benign, if not beneficial to the envi environment, as opposed to harmful to the environment. So that's, that's one thing I'd like to be able to demonstrate. Number two, it's not, it doesn't cost us so much money that doing such a project becomes um, unrealistic. Um, we've estimated that the, the premium that we paid for designing and building this extremely efficient and, and, and energy uh, saving building um, is a 6% premium over what it would have cost us if we built a conventional building. We've also estimated that in the um, reduced utility costs and the reduced maintenance costs that this building uh, will realize for us, that we will get a return on that 6% investment in about eight years. It's amazing. It's amazing. Now, you have been a wonderful guest, and I have enjoyed the interview, and I've enjoyed seeing you again. Thank you very and, much, and Michael. Thank you. Okay. My guest has been Steve Zornetza. He is the father of sustainability base, probably one of the most important buildings ever built that may have a significant impact on, on the planet. And I've asked Pat Burt. He is the former mayor of Palo Alto, and he has specialized in sustainability. And I want to ask him, what did he learn? What did he think were the most important things that Steve Zornetza said? Pat, always good to see you. Good to see you, Michael. How are you today? What did you think? Well, it was really fascinating. It's a, a building that I had heard about uh, uh, just a few years ago. And frankly, to see that they were able to go from the design concept in 2008 to completion before now, uh, is uh, a very aggressive timeline. Uh, so it's not merely what they accomplished, but they were able to do it, uh, not stretching this out as a decade-long project, but to be very efficient on it. Yeah, and I think they did it at a time when Congress was cutting budgets and maybe there was also an uncertainty of uh, you know, when they could do things and get the money, et cetera. I don't well, the know. other takeaways that I had were that thinking back about what NASA has done over decades where they were pioneers in photovoltaic solar panels, where we today in Palo Alto have very strong programs along with other cities of having that as, as a great uh, new renewable power source. It's a great industry for Silicon Valley and beyond. And, um, and what I realized is that what NASA really specializes on is a, a space station is a self-sustainable ecosystem. They have to figure out how to make it all work in an ecosystem. Then you scale that into a building like this or into broader applications, and that's what they've been doing for decades. We tend to just be in awe of what they're doing in outer space, but uh, they've done a lot besides uh, bringing us Tang. Okay, I was wondering, Steve, if I heard him correctly, said this is the most advanced energy building in the world. Did he say that? Uh, uh, the, certainly the most advanced uh, of any federal building in the U.S. I don't know where it stands among all buildings in the world. But then maybe he said it had the most advanced systems. And, and since they developed those systems for space, and it's still early in the game, they would be the only ones with this technology. And do you see the cities? And I know you deal with uh, developers and builders, and, and even around the world you do that. Do you see any signs that these builders, developers, are going to come looking? So there's definitely uh, a strong movement.
towards sustainable buildings. We're building new libraries in Palo Alto, and our main library is a lead platinum library using many principles that are similar, but not nearly as advanced as what uh, Steve has done in his building. So we have both that, that very strong interest of builders and the people who the people and the companies that occupy those buildings actually are helping drive that adoption of very aggressive sustainable practices. But the other thing is we look at new buildings as one opportunity, but can we break components out of this and use portions of it even for our existing buildings? And that can have an even more immediate impact. Okay, you've been a mayor and I know you really have been around. What advice do you have for other mayors uh, builders, what should they do right now, now that you know more about what NASA here is offering? Well, I think part of what Steve described of they are opening up this process. They are having uh, 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 retreats and sessions and symposiums on these kinds of technologies. And for cities and private entities, developers and technologists to engage with that and really uh, take freely. It's our tax dollars who that went into this technology and they're turning it around and offering it to us Good. to take advantage. Good, and that reminds me on August 23rd at Sustainability Base, NASA and Sustainable Silicon Valley have teamed up to put on a program to demonstrate some potentially game-breaking technologies that will help the planet become more sustainable. And if people are interested in signing up for that program, they should uh, search for uh, Sustainable Silicon Valley. Go to their website and sign up. My guests have been Steve Zornetzer, Associate Executive Research for NASA Ames, He's the father of sustainability base. And by the way, he is the man who encouraged me to make the painting sustainability 24 by 5 feet. And my guest has also been Pat Burke, former mayor of Palo Alto and councilman. I'm Michael Killen.